on World News Tonight. Security scam. Intruders threw smoke bombs at Indian MPs on the anniversary of deadly terrorist attack on Parliament. Cold wave. Northern China on alert for snow outsort and record low temperatures. Close match. New poll finds Trump leading Biden in hypothetical 2024 election rematch. Slay train. Santa and his reindeers make a return to Chicago's iconic holiday train. This is Ada Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. We've got a number of coverages lined up for you tonight. Starting off in neighbouring India. India's parliament witnessed chaotic scenes today after at least two men intruded into the chamber shouting slogans and spraying coloured gas. Images show MPS and security officials trying to catch one of the intruders who is being jumping from table to table. Reporters say that the men were overpowered by security officials and taken away. The security breach occurred on the 22nd anniversary of a deadly terror attack on India's parliament. Lawmakers said that the two men jumped into the well of the house from the visitors' gallery. Their motive was not made clear. The incident occurred while lawmakers were in session in the Lok Sabha, the lower house of India's parliament. Both houses were suspended for a short period before the session resumed. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Brilla said that they were investigating the matter and have asked Delhi police to join the inquiry. He added that according to the preliminary investigation, the smoke sprayed into the house appeared to be harmless. Two other people, a man and a woman, have also been detained for protesting outside the parliament by setting off canisters of coloured gas. They were pictured being led away by police. Moving on to freezing China. Snow, blizzards and plummeting temperatures disrupt education, transportation and various aspects across the country, compelling the Chinese authorities to issue the second highest alert for blizzards. Beijing's authorities shut schools and told people to stay home today as a mass of cold air drifted into the Chinese capital from the west, the second cold wave for this week. City officials have issued the second highest alert for blizzards through tomorrow, the only such warning yet in the country. Businesses were told to offer employees flexible working conditions and staggered commutes. Snow, blizzards and plunging temperatures have swept northern China in what could be one of its most severe cold snaps in December. The severe weather has also affected the transportation sector in China as CCTV showed snow plows clearing snow off the tarmac at Beijing Capital International Airport and planes being de-iced. The airport continued to operate with de-icing operations carried out on 80 flights, the CCTV reported. Xinjiang's capital Urumqi was blanketed in snow, forcing flight and train cancellations. This week's cold snap, the second this week, was in a sharp contrast to the autumn-like conditions of a week ago, reflecting recent sharp temperature swings. October was one of Beijing's warmest decades in a year of weather extremes. Beijing could face temperatures as low as minus 18 degrees Celsius this weekend compared to mid-December average of minus 8 degrees Celsius. A pro-Russian Polish politician has been accused of anti-Semitism after he brutally put out Hanukkah candles inside Poland's parliament building with a fire extinguisher, with lawmakers slamming the shocking act as absolutely scandalous. A far-right Polish lawmaker used a fire extinguisher to put out Hanukkah candles in the country's parliament on Tuesday. It happened during an event with members of the Jewish community. As Jagosz Braun extinguished the flames, a woman asked the Confederation Party lawmaker what he was doing. He responded, Those who take parts in acts of satanic worship should be ashamed. Afterwards, Braun took to the podium in the chamber, where he once again described Hanukkah as satanic and said he was restoring normality. Braun's actions have set off a firestorm of outrage. This is unacceptable and it must never happen again, said newly appointed Prime Minister Donald Tusk. This is a disgrace. The incident took place just before a key vote on whether to approve Tusk. Speaker Shimon Havovnia excluded Braun from the sitting of Parliament and said he would inform prosecutors about his actions. He later said that Braun would lose half of his salary for three months and all parliamentary expenses for six months. Members of the Jewish community, including children, had gone to Parliament at Hovovnia's invitation for annual Hanukkah celebrations. Those who were present during the incident reported difficulty breathing after being covered in powder from the extinguisher. 
Braun's Confederation Party won 18 seats in the October 15 election, less than expected. The party said in a post on social media platform X that it condemned Braun's behavior. Over in the UK, a wounded Rishi Sunak has secured victory in a crunch vote on his flagship Rwanda policy. But his political future remains under threat ahead of a New Year showdown on the issue. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak narrowly survived a revolt from within his own party in Parliament on Tuesday as his emergency migrant bill passed a key vote. About two dozen of Sunak's own Conservative lawmakers abstained from voting on his plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda, laying bare his party's deep divisions. Order! Order! The eyes to the right, 313. The nose to the left, 269. So the eyes have it, the eyes have it unlocked. Sunak's first victory in the House of Commons on policy he has pinned his reputation on came after last-ditch negotiations and fears that some of his Conservative lawmakers would help defeat the bill because it was not tough enough. On X after the vote, Sunak wrote, quote, The British people should decide who gets to come to this country, not criminal gangs or foreign courts. That's what this bill delivers. So far, no asylum seekers have been actually sent to Rwanda. The new law was proposed after the UK Supreme Court ruled last month that the plan was unlawful, as it would break agreements on human rights. Sunak responded to the ruling by forging a new treaty with Rwanda and proposing the bill, a piece of emergency legislation designed to override legal obstacles that would stop deportations. Moderate conservatives say they will not support the draft law if it means Britain breaching its human rights obligations. While right-wing politicians say it does not go far enough to stop migrants from making legal challenges to prevent being deported. The bill still faces what's likely to be strong opposition in the House of Lords, and the dozens of right-wingers who abstained from voting Tuesday may continue to try and make the bill tougher along the way. U.S. election updates on the road to the White House now. According to a new poll, former U.S. President Donald Trump would hold a slight edge over President Biden in the 2024 election if the pair rematch at the ballot box. The poll found that Trump holds a two-point lead on Biden nationally, 38% to 36%. A looming election rematch next year between U.S. President Joe Biden and his predecessor, Donald Trump, would be a closely fought contest. Nationwide, the poll put Trump two percentage points up in a head-to-head -head matchup, with 38 percent to Biden's 36 percent. We need a landslide so big that the radical left cannot rig it or steal it, the bigger it is. But presidential elections aren't decided by the popular vote. The state-by-state -state electoral college system used to pick presidents means that voters in just a handful of states will play a decisive role in the election's outcome. And in the seven states where the election was closest in 2020, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, and Michigan, Biden had a four-point lead among Americans who said they were sure to vote. I've never been more optimistic about America's future than today. We just have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. The poll shows Biden, an 81-year-old Democrat, still saddled with voters' doubts about his age and the strength of the economy. The poll pointed to profound vulnerabilities for Trump as well, as the 77-year-old battles four criminal trials. The poll found 31 percent of Republican respondents said they would not vote for Trump if he was convicted of a felony crime by a jury. He has denied any criminal wrongdoing. But the independent bid launched by Robert F. Kennedy Jr., an attorney and vaccine skeptic, could tip the scales toward Trump. The poll found that just 16 percent of respondents said they'd vote for Kennedy. But that pulled support away from Biden, growing Trump's lead to five points nationwide. The poll, conducted online between December 5th and 11th, surveyed roughly 4,400 American adults nationwide and had a credibility interval, a measure of precision, of about two percentage points.
welcome back. Apple has offered to let rivals access its tap-and-go mobile payment system using mobile wallets in order to settle EU antitrust charges. The move could settle EU antitrust charges and starve off a possible hefty fine. Apple has reportedly made a major move to settle EU antitrust charges and fight off a possible big fine. Sources say the US tech giant has offered to let rivals access its tap-and-go mobile payment system used for mobile wallets. Last year, EU regulators charged Apple with curbing access to its tap-and-go technology called Near Field Communication or NFC. That made it difficult for rivals to develop services on Apple devices. The NFC chip enables tap-and-go payments on iPhones and iPads. The EU watchdog further argued this helped Apple's own mobile wallet solution, Apple Pay, and pointed to its dominance in the smart mobile market. The sources said the European Commission will likely look for feedback next month from rivals and customers, and regulators will then decide whether to accept Apple's offer. The EU watchdog declined to comment, while Apple was not immediately available for comment. Apple Pay is used by more than 2,500 banks in Europe. Apple also faces a second charge of stopping Spotify and other music streaming sites from informing users of other buying options outside its app store. The Commission is expected to issue a decision next year. Companies risk fines of up to 10% of their global annual turnover if found guilty of breaching EU antitrust rules. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky met with US President Joe Biden to make an in-person plea for military and economic aid. While President Biden said that the US will not abandon Ukraine in its war against Russia, they stunned Republican opposition to extending war funding. On Tuesday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made his third visit to Washington since the start of the war in Ukraine 22 months ago. He met with members of Congress as well as President Joe Biden. The visit was Zelensky's in-person plea to save a $61 billion U.S. defense package for war-torn Ukraine. That package has been log-jammed by Republicans on Capitol Hill. The Republican members of Congress want the Biden administration to make concessions on U.S. border security and immigration policy in exchange for the aid package. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson said the White House is asking for billions of dollars without a clear strategy for winning the war in Ukraine and that more needs to be done to secure the U.S. homeland borders. What the Biden administration seems to be asking for is billions of additional dollars with no appropriate oversight, no clear strategy to win, and, and none of the answers that I think the American people are owed. I have also made very clear from day one that our first condition on any national security supplemental spending package is about our own national security first. Prior to his meeting on Capitol Hill, President Zelensky addressed the military audience at the National Defense University on Monday, where he expressed hope that he could still count on the U.S. for assistance. Putin must lose. Must lose so that everyone else who sees Russia's war on Ukraine as, as his personal lecture at the so-called University of Aggression gets the message loud and clear. Putin must lose. His weapon against you right now is propaganda and disinformation. But if he sees a chance, he'll go further. Standing alongside the Ukrainian leader at a White House press conference, President Biden vowed on Tuesday that neither he nor the American people would walk away from Ukraine, saying that allowing a Ukrainian defeat would mean Russian President Vladimir Putin and would-be aggressors everywhere would be emboldened. But there was a subtle but noteworthy shift in public messaging from the president. From his previous statement of a pledge for U.S. support for Ukraine as long as it takes, his message shifted to as long as we can. Speaking to reporters during a meeting with Zelensky in the Oval Office, President Biden announced he would be releasing $200 million in funding that's already been approved by Congress to help Ukraine with its defensive needs. While that's a small fraction of the $60 billion Biden hoped for Ukraine in a supplementary funding request, the $200 million can be released shortly. 
Argentina's new government says it will weaken the value of its currency by more than 50% against the US dollar. It is part of the economic shock therapy that President Javier Milei says the country needs to fix its worst crisis in decades. Argentina on Tuesday said it is devaluing its currency, the peso, by over a half. Yo, Javier Gerardo Milei. It's part of a series of measures coming days after new libertarian president Javier Milei assumed office that his government says aim to salvage the country's deteriorating economy. Other measures include cutting energy and transport subsidies, as well as a halt to seeking contracts for public works. New economy minister Luis Caputo. As I said before, there is no money to pay for more public infrastructure, which, as we all know, often ends up in the pockets of politicians and business people. Public works have always been one of the main sources of state corruption, and with us, that will end. Caputo said the plan would be painful in the short term, but was necessary to cut the fiscal deficit and bring down triple-digit inflation. He added Argentina had recorded a fiscal deficit for 113 of the last 123 years, which he said was the cause of the country's economic woes. Its latest inflation rate stands at nearly 150 percent. The economic package was welcomed by the International Monetary Fund, which loaned Argentina $44 billion last year. Now the key doubt is whether Miley's coalition, which is only the third largest bloc in Congress, can implement the ambitious cuts. Credit rating company Fitch said in a Monday commentary that Miley's party has little representation in the legislature, adding alliances with more influential parties remain in flux. Updates on the historic COP28 summit now. A new draft climate agreement released at the COP28 Climate Summit in United Arab Emirates has for the first time explicitly called on nations to transition away from fossil fuels to avert the worst impacts of the climate crisis. After another night of negotiations, the COP28 presidency released a proposed new draft agreement. While the document did heed some calls for stronger language, it seeks to push nations to transition away from fossil fuels rather than phase them out, a key demand for many participants. However, the clock is ticking as scientists and activists warn the planet has already warmed by 1.2 degrees Celsius from pre-industrial times, just shy of the 2015 Paris Accords 1.5 limit. Two degrees is not an option, it's an insane rise in temperature with massive consequences carries a lot of weight and for us 1.5 for the cryosphere is already too high it's a politically feasible solution perhaps but anything above this will cause irreversible long-term sea level rise threaten the future of our food and water health sanitation and also national security the proposed deal comes after days of deadlock between saudi-led opec countries and nations pushing for phasing out non-renewable energy sources on Monday, the first draft agreement did not mention any exit from fossil fuels, only suggestions to reduce their consumption and production. The text was rejected by a large number of countries, including the United States, the European Union and low-lying island states, who are feeling firsthand the effects of the climate crisis. If we put more stuff into the air, the planets will boil. We cannot argue with the 1.5, we cannot argue with the needs to, to phase out fossil ASAP. Now, 200 countries will meet once again to adopt the text, which, if validated, would mark the first time in nearly 30 years of COP climate summits that countries agree on a concerted move away from oil, gas and coal. Welcome back. Indonesia's Marapi volcano struck again sweeping ash a week after a deadly eruption claimed the lives of 23. For more on that story and more, let's take you on the world in a minute. Indonesia's Marapi volcano erupted today, spewing volcanic ash as high as 500 to 600 meters into the air, according to the country's volcanology agency. A time for today sentenced lawmaker Rukchan Noksignok for the progressive Move Forward Party to six years in jail on royal insult charges.
A number of migrants awaited to be processed and transported to a temporary processing centers are crossing the Arizona border wall into the U.S. from Mexico. Worsening weather conditions and intensifying Israeli attacks are exhibiting the already difficult living conditions of thousands of displaced Palestinians crowded into shelters in southern Gaza in a bid to escape the war. Manchester United's slim chance of a Champions League last 16 spot ended with a 1-0 home loss to group winners Bayern Munich, piling more misery on Eric Ten Hag's believed team in an already rocky season. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, yuri.com slash English. Tonight we are leaving you in the United States as Santa Claus along with his sleigh and reindeer is featured in one of the most distinctive and festive holiday train rides. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.